I just want you to keep doing that voice, Diver. Yeah, uh, okay! Can you... <laughs> Let's do the rest of the show like this! I think we're gonna lose a lot of listeners! No! Oh, we'll you get know, more! Maybe it'll be okay! Gonna be alright! Let's talk about the Assassin's Creed! Why didn't they take a break this Okay, I'm, I'm already ready to kill you, so I need you to stop. Everybody, uh, welcome to another episode of the What's Good Games podcast. I'm Andrew Renee, joined by Miss Christine Steimer. Oh, hello, it's me. And Miss Brittany Brombacher. I'm breathing fire. <laughs> oh, I was what? like, wait, what? Why are you breathing fire, Britt? I am breathing fire because we just got done with our live stream pre-show presented by King, and I had the Legend of Soul Guard hot sauce, which is called the Soul Guard Scorcher. I had it on chocolate. I had it on almonds. I had it on rice cakes. What's the and Scoville rating? Is it Scoville? I don't. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't say. But all I know is my head was pulsating. Like mm. I felt my head pulsating. You ate I said, I don't a know lot of that normal. hot sauce. Oh, so good though. So delicious. But I'm better now. I'm not as delirious as I was. I got better. Well, well, good. Like I'm, I'm glad that you've recovered. Um, as she mentioned, if you guys missed our live pre-show presented by King this week, we will have the archives on twitch.tv slash what's good games on youtube.com slash what's good games and on facebook.com slash what's good games. Uh, a big thank you again to King for sponsoring that. And this, of course, is your source for video game news, commentary, analysis and funny stuff. The What's Good Games podcast. And I have a little bit of PAX housekeeping. And when I say a little bit of PAX housekeeping, I mean a lot of PAX housekeeping. If you guys also are fans of Kind of Funny Games Daily, you know that there is a laundry list of things that we are doing with uh, some of the guys over there and, of course, that we're hosting. Um, starting on Friday of PAX West, which is happening in Seattle next weekend, August 31st, we are going to be attending the Expanding the Life is Strange Universe panel, and I will be moderating that. We're very excited about that. And then we're throwing a party. It's going to be great. It's going to be back at the Unicorn. Uh, Simer, do you remember the, the names of the drinks we picked last year? No. Totally putting you on the spot. But do you I don't remember, but <laughs> I will say that I helped pick out this bar last year, so I'm taking credit for that. You should absolutely uh, take credit. Um, it's going to be great. You did, you did. Sorry. No, totally you go. Pointed. I was going to say, Simon, you're right. You did recommend it, and then I checked it out in person. So, yes, you're absolutely correct. I remember there was one drink that tasted like a Fruit Loops. That sounds right. That sounds Yeah, they've got a lot of like really fun flavored drinks there. Yeah. It's a cool place. I'm excited that we're back. And if I'm not mistaken, we have more of the bar this time. This time we have the entire bar. That is correct. So if you guys attended our amazing event last year sponsored by Square Enix, you knew that there was a giant line around the block and we had to turn some people away. We didn't want to do that this year. We took over, or are going to take over, I should say, the entire Unicorn Bar, both upstairs and downstairs, where the awesome arcade machines and pinball is. There's going to be two different bars. We're going to have so much fun. There's going to be giveaways. I've been working with Square. They've been telling me what the swag is going to be. There's going to be t-shirts. There's going to be custom Life is Strange pins. It's going to be fantastic. It's all happening from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Unicorn. We'd really appreciate it. Tell your friends. Go to Facebook.com slash What's Good Games and RSVP for the event there so we can have an idea of how many people are coming. And the first 100 people to come to the party are going to get free drinks on us, you guys. Well, really on Square Enix. Thank you so much for yeah. paying for the party. <laughs> I can't afford it. <laughs> no, we would love to. Someday, what's good, we'll make enough money that we can throw everybody a party and, and, and buy you all cocktails. It's going to be great. But um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And the awesome team from Don't Nod is going to be there. So if you guys have questions, uh, we're going to be talking about that new Life is Strange trailer and gameplay that dropped at Gamescom a little bit later on in the show. But I really wanted to uh, make sure you guys knew that. We also are going to be participating in quite a few panels. I'm hosting three panels, as I mentioned, the Life is Strange panel. We we also have uh, the Just Cause for Showcase on Saturday at 11.30 a.m. And the Shadow of the Tomb Raider uncovering the hidden city of Paititi panel at 4.30 p.m. on Saturday. And my third panel on Saturday is uh, the Kind of Funny Interwebsite Video Game Tournament. So 
Greg posted a little teaser trailer of all of the contenders. If you guys oh, haven't good. seen it, uh, head on over to his Twitter or my Twitter and uh, check it out. It's pretty. It's pretty funny. <laughs> um, and Miss Brittany and Miss Steimer are going to be appearing on a panel as well. You want to tell me about it, Britt? I would love to. We are going to be doing Red Dead Radio Live with Jared Petty and then some other fine chap from IGN. Sorry, sir. I don't know your name off the top of my head. But it's called The Games That Shaped Red Dead Redemption. It is Saturday, September 1st at 11 a.m. I believe Miss be Friend of the Show, Miss Sydney Goodman, is also going to be on that panel. Is she? Oh, wait. Oh. No, she's on his Spider-Man panel. Jared's oh, doing Superman a lot of panels at PAX. Yeah, I think yeah. she's doing a superhero panel. I think she's doing a super panel, superhero panel with him. But it'll be fun. We get to talk about Red Dead Redemption. More and horses. Cyber, and horses. I'll talk about Oregon Trail. It'll be great. Oh, my God. Oregon Trail. Yeah. So good. And then I have, like, a bajillion appointments. But I'm very, very excited for all and of I'm gonna, them. I'm going to, like, hold your hand and try to run to all of these with you. And we'll yeah. see. Yeah, we so go. Yeah, I looked at Brittany's schedule and I was like, "Why? Why did you do this to yourself? Like, this is gonna be really brutal." But we're, I love yeah, video games. it's gonna be great. We're really looking forward to it. And our panel, the What's Good Games Live panel, is going to be streamed. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, for the first <gasps> time ever, a PAX panel will be streamed in the Hydra Theater. It's gonna be. <laughs> will it? I mean, yes. All of the panels in the Hydra Theater are live streamed. <laughs> I am just saying, with our track record, oh, no, would anyone be surprised if, like, one little spark plug, I don't know what the hell people use to, to stream these things, fizzles out. A and spark then, plug? Definitely not a spark plug, that's but, what, you know. That's what ignites your car engine. Yeah, I know. Brittany? I know. Oh, just, my gosh. Throw, I'm just throwing out mechanical shit. It's fine. <laughs> It'll be this great, ladies fine. and gentlemen. Everything it will be streamed. Fine. You, be you crack me up. I love you. Um, So, please participate if you are going to be at Packs. if you're going to be in Seattle, just I want to make a, a note. If you are going to be in Seattle and you don't have a PAX badge, you can still come to the party. Uh, you don't need a PAX badge, but you do need to be 21 plus with a valid ID. But admission is free, so tell your friends and uh, let's have a, a, a grand old time. It's going to be fantastic. So we are going to run the show just a little bit differently this week because there is a massive amount of news that came out of Gamescom. Uh, really, uh, almost of E3 proportions, I would say. Like It, it was a really uh, fruitful week for fantastic news stories. So we're going to try to maybe do the first segment of news just about Gamescom. We're going to do some extra news in the second segment. And then we're probably going to make the third segment all hands-on. Because um, we do have some new games to talk about. Some games that I played under embargo that I can now chat about. Like Sekiro. Ooh and Spyro, and Reigns, and some other things. So, without further ado, let's get started. This section of the news, of course, as we mentioned, is brought to you by Legend of Soulguard and King. If you guys want to download that game, if you watched that and you loved it, and you're like, this looks really cool, go to bit.ly slash WGG Soulguard. That's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash W-G-G-S-O-L-G-A-R-D and download that game for free. That's right. It's free to play. Soul God. Soul God. So I guard your soul, but it's spelled like the sun and not the thing inside of you. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what that means. No, that was perfect. <laughs> you, guard the sun, you guard the sun inside us all. Okay. Yay. Oh, yay. Not really on brand for Steimer, but I love it. I like this new leaf you're turning over. <laughs> I am moved. I am moved to AF. All right. All right, so we're going to kick off our Gamescom news section talking about Inside, S X X <clears throat> Inside Xbox. Um, so Microsoft had a really big showing at Gamescom, as they do every year. And in their special edition of Inside Xbox, they announced quite a few things. And what that includes is... Halo, the Master Chief Collection, is finally getting enhanced for Xbox One X on Xbox Game Pass. And that is coming on September 1st. I can't believe it took this long for them to bring that to their proprietary subscription service for Xbox One X. <laughs> what yeah, happened? this kind of seems like a, an E3 announcement, but maybe they wanted something for Gamescom. I don't know. Either way, this is maybe a they were wonderful... Like Let's test how this goes with like the other things, and then if it's going okay, then we then we give them the halos. 
in case the Game Pass thing had like kicked the bucket by now. Now they're yeah, like, okay, I guess they were like, oh, <laughs> like no one's buying this regardless. I I don't know, you know. Yeah, no, this is a wonderful collection. Totally 100% worth it. Unfortunately, September 1st, just not like an ideal uh, launch time. But hey, you know, it'll be there for you when you're done with Red Dead and Spider-Man and Shadow all the other the millions Raider. of games that are out there. And Assassin's Tomb Raider, Creed. Assassin's Creed. Everything oh else that's coming out this fall. I'm yeah, the, the, the timing is, <laughs> is not great. Um, but I guess it's good for people if you're on a budget and you can only get maybe one or two of these, you know, big triple A's that are coming out this holiday and this fall. Um, the Master Chief Collection is incredibly well done. If you have not tried it out and you have enjoyed Halo or maybe you've never played Halo, this is a great way for both fans and newcomers to get into that series. So highly recommend you check it out. Um, starting this week... Actually, it'll be, oh yeah, no, this week until August 31st, you can get one month of Xbox Game Pass for just two bucks or the equivalent local currency wherever you live and receive a second month for free in nearly all countries where Xbox Game Pass is available and the mobile app will allow users to manage their catalog, install directly to their Xbox One and manage your subscription in addition to a number of other features. That's pretty cool. So what excuse do you have to not try it, right? It's two bucks. Buy one. Get one. Uh oh, Brittany Whoa. froze. <laughs> oh let's, no, the wait. internet is being a bad, let's look bad at this friend frozen today. Brittany face, everybody. YouTube.com slash what's good games. You did, but you're sad. Oh, okay, you're, you're back. back. <laughs> Amazing. I'm back. Uh, but what I was saying is it's buy one, get one free, right? And the two dollar price point is a little strange, but I'm thinking people are like, oh, two bucks. That's nothing. And I get another month free. And then they got your credit card number, you see. And by the time that second month rolls around, you're going to have completely forgotten about the $2 you spent. Oh, 100%. I still have my credit card on auto charge for gold. And every time it comes up, I'm always like, shit, I need to turn that (laughs) off. (laughs) And I never do. And it just renews again the next year. I forget about it until a year later when it does it again. I'm like, God. Why are, you, why are you mad about that, though? Don't, don't you like having Xbox Live Gold? Uh, I mean, I don't really play almost anything online on my Xbox. Uh, but um, also, fair. I don't know if you know this, Andrea, but technically I could probably get it for free. So <laughs> it's like 60 bucks I don't have to spend. That's true. I actually, I, I might even have a code for it. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, that's more of what it is like for me and my budgeting tax deduction. Is, uh, just, you know, use it as a write off. You got to play go. games to do your job. Right. Uncle Sam sure. understands. Uh, Does he? <laughs> he, I mean, I, some days I don't know. I've actually never met the guy. <laughs> I'm just assuming <laughs> I've never met the guy. <laughs> Dear Uncle Sam, do you like to play video games? Uh, if so, which ones? Oh, my God. Well, which good games? You guys He's accept all my write offs, all the whiskey purchases <sighs> I make. Anyway. Okay, um, I want to continue moving on here. Rare has revealed Sea of Thieves' next update, Dub Forsaken Shores, will be coming on September 19th. They already announced that update. They were just announcing the release date. A player Unknown's Battlegrounds, this is the big one, is finally exiting early access on Xbox Game Preview and launching on September 4th for a full product release. So this is just a couple weeks away. And um, it's about time. It's been almost a full year in Xbox Game Pass preview. Now, when this story came out, Microsoft was clearly just, you know, celebrating the transition of bringing a game in that started on PC, nurturing it through community feedback, through Xbox Game Pass program, and now fully launching it. So congrats, Xbox. Um, I would love to see how PUBG is still doing with Fortnite. And I mean, like... Honestly, I'm going to I'm going to be very anxious to see in November when both Call of Duty and Battlefield 5 have launched how it's doing. I hope it hangs in there. There's it will. a lot of people It'll that love it. It will hang in there, but I think it's not an incorrect assumption to assume that those numbers will be affected in some manner. True. Yeah. Yes. Um, they announced a Spirit Trials mode for Ori and the Will of the Wisps. They announced the State of Decay 2's Daybreak Pack is coming on September 12th. There's a new Forza Horizon 14 multiplayer action. I don't know what that means. Maybe there's a new gameplay. Um, n- eight new bundles and three new controller designs for Xbox One X. That's crazy. Um, so that includes special edition consoles, the Gold Rush special edition, 
the wireless controller uh, designed specifically for PUBG and a bunch of new options in the Xbox Design Labs. If you guys want to check those out, of course, head on over to Xbox.com. And then to round out the Xbox news, Record, Definitive Edition, Super Lucky Tale, Disneyland Adventures, Rush, a Disney Pixar Adventure, Zoot Tycoon Ultimate Animal Collection are all coming to Steam and PC Disc on September 14th. Which is, huh, oh, man. I mean, I get, I get why they would come to Steam, but like, a PC Disc? disc? What? I mean, I, I mean they all real, kind real, of like... Yo? makes sense and then there's just recore now don't get me wrong like they're all like super lucky sale disney like cartoony happy games and then there's recore which isn't like a super violent non-family friendly game or anything it's just kind of an interesting addition but yeah, i get Recore it. definitely had like the sort of i don't want to say pixar because that's not really the art style it was Didn't but it have the robot dog had a bit more of like robot oh dog. Friends, robot friends but mm -hmm. honestly that game i thought was i got bored after like four hours yeah, I, I, yeah, uh, me too, unfortunately. Jason's actually playing it for the first time right now, and I remember one of the big th issues with that game were the very, very long loading times. I think at one point it was like a two to three minute loading time, and it was between, like, areas. Um, it looks like they fixed that since then, and I kind of want to hop back in and try it, but obviously that'll never happen. There's yeah. a lot of games coming For out. me, I was more disappointed with the lack of variety in both, like, in, in combat and in also... Uh, visuals like it was just like okay there's a lot of sand here you get it but i don't know mm -hmm. like it just eventually it gets tiresome and so i just sort of fizzled out on it i really enjoyed myself for like again like for a few hours while i was playing it i thought it was really fun uh and then i just hit up i think i stopped playing at the point when i needed to like grind a lot more to get the orbs to like open the next thing and i was yeah. just like all right i guess i'm done with you yeah, and I mean, Time some people like fun. that gameplay loop, but for me, it was the same thing. It was a turn off. It was... yeah. yeah. I have such a time crunch for things now that I just can't, I can't deal with it. I hear Which you. I'll talk about later in the hands-on and explain how I'm playing games these days. <laughs> Moving on. You're going to play more games. We'll work on it. It'll be great. Find the time in my schedule. I would be happy to. You just got to cut that Barry's boot camp out of your schedule, and then, bam, you could stay up later. Oh, no. <laughs> I like berries. It makes me feel strong like bull. <laughs> I love you, Samer. No, exercise is important, kids. Get uh, some physical activity. All right. We have got a bunch of new game and date announcements. I'm going to try to rattle a couple of these off. If you see one that you really want to stop and talk about, Wave your hands or something. <laughs> Wave your hands in the air. Uh, the Walking Dead, the complete first season, is coming to Nintendo Switch on August 28th. Season 2 and A New Frontier will also be coming to console later this year. Nintendo has announced the 3DS remake of Luigi's Mansion will be released on October 12th in North America. Give me on the Switch. I, I, I mean, right? This is really what we need. Like, why, mm -hmm. why are you still releasing stuff on the 3DS? That system came out in 2011. It's time to sunset I it. Yeah, yes. I agree. Time I to think... go to that sweet, sweet night 3DS. I mean, they have, like, I think as of last year, what was the install base? Like, 72 million 3DSs. So they have a lot of people there. And I think the average software was, like, I think the software sold was, like, 350 million. So there's a lot there. I get it. That they have an right. audience. But, but por qué no know, los dos? Right, there you go. Well, I mean, why would you want to... I, I agree with you guys. Like it needs, it needs to be sunsetted. Like you've had a wonderful, beautiful run. You did a lot of great things. I understand right now you can get like a 2DS for 80 bucks and when the switch is still at 300, you know, there's a price discrepancy there and maybe some people aren't ready to plunk down the extra hundred dollars. But I think if the switch gets a price drop or maybe, I don't know, like if you see a kid, are you going to be like, here's a switch or here's a, a 2DS or a 3DS? Like, I feel like the 3DS just, I don't know. I don't trust children. They break and ruin things. So get, you would give them the 3DS then? I would give them an $80 2DS. 2DS, the, the one that doesn't fold. 3D. Yeah, well, the 2DS, I don't care. That's only 80 bucks. They don't need a folding contraption. That's true. Hinges break. Anyway, yeah, I, I don't think the 3DS has is much longer for this world, and that's a good thing. It needs to go bye-bye. I mean, it doesn't need to like go away forever, but just make the stuff also for Switch. Exactly. That's all we're really it's asking, like, Nintendo. I don't own a 3DS, and I have zero plans to buy a 3DS, but I would no, like granted. to play this. I'm not a developer, but I know the Switch is obviously so much more powerful than the 3DS. Like, how could they do that? What do you mean? I mean, it's more powerful, but you could, that doesn't mean that you wouldn't run. It just might not It might not look as like, great want... as it could because it wouldn't be built for that platform. I don't want a so... Mansion 3 
on the Switch looking like a 3DS game. I don't want well, anything looking thing. like a 3DS game. Those games never looked good. No. That's right. I said it. No, they didn't. They never looked good. I love this. But I mean, no, but Brittany, like, the point is more like, my PC still plays games from 1981. Like, so mm -hmm. just because this PC has a lot more hardware doesn't mean it doesn't run the old stuff. It just looks what it, it just is what it is. It just looks the way it looks because it's built for the 3DS. So, so you're it saying look you, great. Okay, so you're saying you'd like the, the remake of the 3DS Luigi's Mansion also on the Switch looking as it does. Yeah, that's fine. I understand oh, you don't no, have I, the, the, the capacity to, like, do a whole new thing just for the Switch, but like but give going people forward, the option. But going forward, please build things from the ground up for the Switch. That would be great. That's okay, what I'm bye. Bye. Love you, Nintendo. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, continuing on with our Gamescom news, Shenmue 3 finally has a release date. It'll be out on August 27th, 2019 for Windows PC and PS4, and they also debuted a new trailer. Um, this, as far as we can tell, is the uh, longest in the future date for any video game so far, like an actual specific date. Hmm. Most of the games that are beyond March 2019 don't have a date. It's it's spring, it's, it's this, fall, yeah, it's holiday. This season. Um, but so, uh, mark your calendars if you are uh, a big Shenmue fan. Capcom I mean, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it's gonna be like you're saying mark your calendars. I'm like, I mean, come on, like, do we really <laughs> think they're gonna get this date? Yes, I do. I think that if they're if they're so bold as to pick a date this far out in advance, that's you know, like Q at the very end of Q2 next year. Actually, this might be in Q3 next year. Um, mm. I can do calendar math. Um, I. I think that that says a lot. I think that says a lot about where they are. Now, if they decide to do any changes from their main production timeline, then maybe not. But, I mean, this game has been in development for a very long time. Was it since 2015? So so was The Last Guardian. We all know how that went. Uh, this is not the same team, though. No, I, well, no, no, no. I'm well aware it's not the same team. I'm just saying, like, developing games is hard. And... Sometimes shit happens, and so I, just because they put a specific date, to me it's more like a weird thing than a confidence. I mean, to me, I feel more like, huh, that's odd, versus like, oh, I believe that this is the date they will hit. Like, I don't think that, I don't know. Yeah. I'm going oh. to come back with the salt and say I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> shake, shake it on there. No. I so hear bad. you. It, it almost seems like, a, again, I'm not a game developer. I've never developed a game, but it seems almost like it's a motivational date. Like, we have until August 27th, rather than... Because, I mean, when you're a year out from game development or, and going gold and publishing your game and whatnot, it seems like there's so much gray area between now and then that something could go wrong that you might not miss, might not make that date. But, hey, I'm rooting for you, sirs and ma'ams. Yeah, get this Shenmue out there. We'll find out a year. It. We'll find out about a year from now whether or not this actually happened. You That's, sure will. It's true. Almost exactly a year from now. Um, Capcom has revealed Devil May Cry 5 will be released on March 8th. 2019 stacking Q1 with just another big release. The Dark Souls trilogy has also been announced for a PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and has been given an October release date. Priced at $80, the Dark Souls trilogy is a three-game compilation featuring a Dark Souls Remastered, Dark Souls 2, Scholars of the First Sin, and Dark Souls 3, the Fire Fades Edition, all packaged in an exclusive steelbook case. The compilation includes all previously released DLC content, and it is going to be released the same day as Dark Souls Remastered on the Switch. Um... Some people had written into Games Daily asking, like, why would they release the collection and and the remaster on the same day? And I and I said maybe people don't want the full collection. Maybe they just want one. Maybe they don't need all yeah. three. Yeah, and I feel like the people who want the game on Nintendo Switch are probably different f from the audience who wants the entire collection. I True. Like there's and the entire audience. collection isn't available on Switch. So right, exactly. So there you have it. Yep. Uh, Bandai Namco has announced The Dark Pictures, Man of Medan, the first installment in a brand new narrative horror anthology series. The Dark Pictures is slated to release in 2019 for PS4, Xbox One, and Steam, developed by Supermassive Games. 
the acclaimed studio behind the cult classic thriller Until Dawn, Britney's Dancing. The Dark Picture is a series of standalone cinematic horror games linked by one common element, that every playable character can live and every playable character can die throughout the story, yielding numerous possible endings and near limitless replayability. The series... <gasps> which is the first in Supermassive's horror catalog to release on Xbox One and PC, challenges players to face their fears and uncover the secrets of the Dark Pictures universe. Every choice has potentially irreversible consequences. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm so excited. IGN had a nine-minute trailer of this and gameplay and all that, and I watched it. I am so excited. Now, Samer and I streamed Until Dawn from start to finish back in the day. We did. That was yeah. a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun, but see, like, that kind of horror doesn't freak me out as much, but this one, they have zombies, they have quick time events, well, I don't want to call them zombies, but they look like zombies. Their corpses are all de decomposing, they're moving, they're trying to grab you and eat you. It looks really good. I'm very, very, very excited for this, and it I'm, looks it looks really pretty. I'm not going to lie, Britt, I didn't actually look at what you tagged, I just <gasps> knew it was a horror game. And so I, because I knew it was a horror game, I didn't want to look at it. It wasn't it wasn't but, bad at all. It was really good actually. No, I know, and now I'm watching it like without sound on my phone and I'm like, oh wait, because you said it's super massive and I was like, wait a minute, I loved Until Dawn. So I'm like, yeah. oh shit. Actually I would I would play this with you. <laughs> yeah. I, would, I take it back. I would we, play this with you. Yeah, we could all play it together. This one feels one that I could maybe get into. There was another one that Britt tagged me and recently that looked way scarier and i was like i don't think so i think it was the one that i was like nope 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 yeah yeah yeah. Oh, the conjuring. i was like mm -hmm. yeah no conjuring. thanks um, <laughs> i did want to give a little bit of context so brian crescente over at variety um spoke with pete samuels who said who's the ceo at supermassive and he said each game in the series is going to feature a brand new story setting and characters the anthology format gives us the opportunity to tap into a variety of horror subgenres. we've identified 39 that we'd love to represent in the anthology but that would take some time wowza 39 different subgenres. that's crazy yeah so when this game starts out you have because i took a note you can choose between Just if you're one. an emotional Just thinker one. or a rational thinker so emotional is like i tend to let my heart drive my decisions rational is i usually weigh up all the info and it's a narrator that's kind of asking you these questions and i'm sure that's going to obviously have some impact on the game you play but the way the game plays is just kind of like until dawn. There's nothing on your screen. Um, there's no UI minus the button prompts that you'll see. So you'll be walking around. You'll see an item on the ground. You press X. You pick it up or whatever console you're playing on. And you can rotate it. And from that, you can find information. If you've ever played a Resident Evil game, it's kind of thing where you'll pick it up and you'll turn it around and try to find, like, hints and clues and puzzles. And... Um, yeah, and then there's other decisions that you have to make. Someone will startle you, and then it's like, boom, make a decision. And then you can see, like, your little timer going down, and I'm very, very excited for this. We both know that I shoot first, so that's not great. Don't startle me, ever. <laughs> Don't startle, Steimer. Don't startle me. Oh, my gosh. So excited. Yeah, it's going to be – it's coming out so quickly, too, right? Or does that also, 2019? Also, my door just opened, and I'm hoping it's my dog. Oh, God. Just throwing that out there. Is it your dog? Oh. Go check. Brad. Oh, yes, yeah, 2019. Uh, he's not coming in my room, so that's fine. It must not have been. I'm I don't sure know. That's just a friendly ghost. It's yeah, fine. Cool. You'll be fine. Good news is that we are, we're documenting all of this, so if anything happens to you. So if you do get murdered, we'll know who it is. So <laughs> oh, Jesus. you'll be avenged. It's okay. I will exactly. have my avenge. Exactly. Um, so continuing on because you guys are, I wasn't joking there's a lot of games got news uh, Bandai Namco is also excited to announce that Ace Combat 7 is finally going to commence on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on January 18th 2017 with the Steam version 2019 oh sorry 2019 thank you for that correction <laughs> the Steam version of her PC coming on February 1st 2019 uh, Ubisoft announced the return of the classic build-up strategy game The Settlers which will be led by Volker Verdict the creator of the franchise The Settlers will be available on PC in fall 2019 Ubisoft has also announced that Tom Clancy's The Division 2 is getting a crap load of different versions you can buy um, and I'm not exaggerating. Um, crap load is maybe not the most, you know, aesthetically <laughs> pleasing like, word to use. Crap load. <laughs> um, but um, no, we love our friends over at Ubisoft. So as you guys know, they really love to go big with their collector's editions. And The Division 2 is no exception. 
They've got uh, Digital Ultimate Edition, the Dark Zone Collector's Edition, the Phoenix Shield Collector's Edition that runs a whopping $249.99. Plus, they've got collectible figurines. And uh, you guys can find out all of the details if you guys are super hype for the Division 2 and you're like, I must have the statue. You can get all of that over at Ubisoft store from Ubisoft.com. And as we mentioned, there was a new Life is Strange 2 trailer and gameplay demo. So this was really exciting. We got the announcement, of course, about Life is Strange 2 like a year ago, right before they announced Before the Storm. So we know the game has been in development, but we didn't really have any details. And after the awesome adventures of Captain Spirit happened, we kind of had a bunch of fan theories floating around, and now we've got some stuff confirmed. So the main characters are going to be brother Sean, who is 16, and Daniel, who is 9, and they are living in a fairly normal life in Seattle, Washington. Following a tragic event, their lives are forever changed. Now on the run from the police and threatened with both separation and incarceration, Sean decides to take his younger brother and seek a better life in their family's hometown of Puerto Lobos, Mexico. Just a little bit of a hitchhike from Seattle. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a long walk. Yeah, so the first of five episodes, of course, is going to release on September 27th on Xbox One, PlayStation, and PC. And we have somebody that wrote in, Britt. Do you want to read this, dear WGG? I would love absolutely nothing more. This comes from Matthew. Matthew says, I found your podcast at the beginning of the month and have been binging, and your spoiler cast for the farewell episode of Before the Storm has prompted me to get to that. Thanks. As I've been playing it, though, I've been thinking about what would have happened if Max hadn't moved away. Do you guys think it would be interesting to have a Before the Storm style three episode series exploring that as an alternative universe style thing, or would it be too mundane? Personally, I think it would be really interesting to see what Don't Nod Deck Nine could come up with. Now, this doesn't have anything to do with Life is Strange 2, so we can come back to this, or we can answer this now. Um, let's answer this now, because it's a really great question. Um, I like that you already are thinking that it might be mundane, but I think that it would be interesting to potentially see if Chloe and Rachel's relationship would have turned out differently if Max had been there the entire time. Do we want to keep the spoiler free? Probably. Probably. Eh, no. <laughs> it's wild. I was like, no. <laughs> I'm just like, I think you, sure, it's fine. Okay. But Because I feel like, here's my take. I feel like the whole point of Life is Strange was that you can't fuck with time and you can't fuck with alternative uh, timelines because, like, it just doesn't work. And so for me, I'm like, I I mean, I don't think that they would need to have that. Would it be interesting? Just, I mean, a lot of the game actually is that, like, alternate timeline stuff. Mm -hmm. So maybe it would be interesting. But I think at this point, I would like for them to move on from these characters uh, and I'm, that's why I'm excited to like see these new, new kids and like what their deal is. But yeah, it's cause it would be interesting to see how, cause I feel like, okay, we're going to spoil some stuff. I feel like Chloe and, uh, Rachel became fast friends, obviously. And I feel like Chloe was missing that void in Max. And so she probably clung to Rachel a lot harder than she would have otherwise. And I feel Absolutely. like Max has been that, 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 um, logic sense or something whatever i'm trying to say i feel like she would she was be... a grounding element for thank you chloe. yeah exactly a grounding element for chloe and maybe she would have stopped her from doing some crazy shit i mean i don't know crazy shit happens in life is strange anyway even with max there um i mean part of me wants to see more of the um open-ended story elements tied up but part of me appreciates that about life is strange is that you're kind of forced to draw your own conclusions to my knowledge there's no incoming um whether it's a comic or game or whatever, that's going to be explaining what happened with Chloe and Rachel before Rachel was killed, right? Because we know if you pay attention to the story, they had a falling out. Rachel started dating, um, God, what's his, the drug dealer oh, guy? Drug dealer. Frank. Right. Ah. Frank. And Frank. so there was some weird stuff going on there, right? So I, I think that's, that would have been interesting to explore, but at the same time, I kind of appreciate that. It's kind of left to our own imagination what happened. I yeah, I, I don't think, I mean, I don't think that Life is Strange would have happened if Max hadn't moved away, because like you said, Britt, um, I mean, part of why Chloe goes into this weird downward, downward spiral is like her friend leaves after her dad dies. Mm -hmm. So like, 
she's left with feeling super alone and like nobody is there. And then when Rachel comes in, it's like, oh, hello, person. I yeah. fit you here. You go here now. Um, but if that void wasn't there to be filled, I don't – like she probably would have spoken to Rachel, but I don't think they would have like hit it off the way that they did. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe they would have, but I think – Max, like you said, would also kind of be like, hmm, stability. she's a bit hot and cold. <laughs> yeah, she could have been stability in her life. Yeah. If you're maybe uh, confused because you haven't played Life is Strange or Life is Strange Before the Storm, I'm going to take this opportunity <laughs> to let you know that if you are in Seattle and you come to our party on Friday night, you have the opportunity to win a Life is Strange Before the Storm Collector's Edition for your platform of true. choice. I'm just, you know, I'm just saying that. Good plug, Saying, good plug. Thanks. Um, going back to Life is Strange 2, there is a 20-minute gameplay video out. Have any of you ladies watched it? No, I only watched the regular, I kind regular of, trailer. Yeah, I kind of don't want to watch it, but I kind of need to. I, I literally loaded the video, and I pressed play, and then I was like, oh. Oh, yeah. Is it, it the beginning of the game? Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm pretty – yeah, yeah. Um, then yeah, definitely. I won't spoil it here because even like the first 20 minutes, if you want to watch it, it's worth going in and like not really understanding, not really knowing what's going to go on, but it looks really promising. It looks really great. And the Reddit leak that we talked about in our captain spirit spoiler cast about Sean and Daniel Diaz was accurate. Those are the, um, the neighbor boys, but now I think they're obviously a little bit more grown up. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I'm because excited. It's also like in Seattle and I'm like, that was not in Seattle. Yeah. The other play the other thing. They were in the woods. Yeah, they somewhere. were they were somewhere in um I think somewhere in Oregon. I thought that's what they said. So it must yeah, be like, yeah. yeah. And they were right. younger. And when you watch the, the first twenty minutes, you've learned that some stuff has happened, so they've probably moved or something. But either way, very excited for well, it. I mean like you have to move when you levitate the next door neighbor's son. <laughs> right? <laughs> Like you can't, you can't really like come back from that. Um, can you see like knocking and they're like, Doctor, like, excuse me, um, your son levitated my son, and there's gonna um, be a problem. We both know that dad wouldn't give up. <laughs> oh my god, so good. It's true. It's true. He was not a good man. <laughs> um, yeah, I only watched the regular trailer and I was like, holy hell, did they kill a cop? Like, so I'm, I should actually go and watch the. You should. Yeah. The main premiere trailer because I'm not sure what's happening in it. I yeah, it explains bad things that are whole... happening. The whole thing, yeah. Yes, I'm excited. Great. Um, all right. Um, some other trailers that came out. I'm just gonna list these real quick. Uh, Resident Evil 2, Lego DC Super Villains, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Diablo 3 for Switch, Fallout 76, Battlefield 5, Metro Exodus, Dead or Alive 6, Super Mario Party, Smash Bros. Ultimate. Lots of video um, of uh, trailers and gameplay. So Brit, there was a big chunk of gameplay for Resident Evil. Yeah, there was. So we got to see Claire Redfield in action, which I was very, very pleased about. So the screenshots we've seen, I'll keep I'll keep this brief so you ladies don't fall asleep. So the screenshots <laughs> we've seen of Claire, there have been some concerns about her her face in the sense that she just looked kind of she doesn't like Leon looks like a PS4 version of his PS1 self. Claire looked a little different than her PS1 self. Like well, women are hard to that's... animate, Brit. <laughs> That's true. I'm sorry. I I my I just Snickers, lost all my Snickers, arguments. Snickers, you just Snickers. dropped that truth bomb on me. But yeah, um, lol. That joke will never die within the industry. Uh, but she looks really great in the game. Her mannerisms, the way she interacts with Sherry, which obviously plays a very big role in that game and in the overall Resident Evil universe. You get to see William Birkin in action. Um, it, he's the crazy guy with a big eyeball in his arm, and there's like a really interesting story behind. <laughs> Behind that, <laughs> and then you get to see uh, Chief Brian Irons, who also plays a very interesting role within the Resident. He plays a very big role in the Resident Evil universe, but in Resident Evil 2, he has his like very specific role as well. So it's really cool to see these characters. Okay, Stick Stickly is up. What's up, Simon? Does the eyeball have a name? No. Oh. I mean, you can call that it I.E. the eyeball, or we can call it Steimer the eyeball. We can call oh, it whatever. I don't want it to be named after me. Oh, okay. Um, I just we, thought it would be cute if it was like, I'm so-and-so, and this is my eyeball, so-and-so. Yeah. So-and-so. But no, it looks it looks great. Every time I see footage for this, I just get so freaking amped up. I want to go, like, punch a bear in the face, or if I was Steimer, knife a bear. Knife a bear in the butt. Yeah, it looks really just... That's how you have to kill it. If you can't kick it to its face, it's going to bite you. That's okay, but if you've seen the Resident Evil 2 footage, you have all the energy you need, all the power you need. 
Uh-oh. You don't need nothing. You don't even need a knife. You just need fisticuffs. Anyway, it looks great. I, every day, everything I see about this game just looks better and better. I just, ugh. Okay, I'm done. Are you sure? <laughs> I mean, no, I could keep going, but you don't want me to. <laughs> I just saw a bunch of your tweets, and I was like, oh, she's very excited. Oh, I'm God. excited for her. I don't know if I've ever been this excited for a game. I mean, Zelda, like, I was excited oh, no. for Breath of the Wild, but did I freeze again? No, my thing just closed a window oh. for some reason. But this game, I don't know if I've ever been more excited. I don't know. <laughs> I don't right, know. Man. I don't know if I've ever felt that way about any game. Anthem? I mean, I'm excited for Anthem. I guess maybe Mass Effect 3 before that mm. game came out. There was like incredible levels of hype from me um for that game since I was I had spent so much time seven playthroughs of Mass Effect 2. <laughs> um yeah. Yeah, so it's just like I, I mean maybe that but I don't know. I, I just love your sheer unbridled passion, Britt. It's great. I have you, no filter. You live your best it's life. Um, she sure does. So I think we're going to take a little bit of a, a short break, unless there's any of these other trailers that you guys want to talk about um, from from Gamescom. And then when we come back, we'll have a little bit more news. And then we'll I'll talk a little bit about some, some hands-on. What do you think about that, ladies? That's I'm doing the great. kid. The kid is like turns ah the computer yeah with the cool hair yeah Yeah. he's got cool hair all right everybody we're gonna take uh just a few minutes and we will be right back Welcome back, everybody. It's segment two of the What's Good Games podcast, and we are continuing on with even more news because, boy, oh, boy, it's Gamescom week. I mean, this is really what I'd love to do for our E3 show. We need to have, like, a three-hour E3 palooza. When we're going to record this, I don't know. We'll have to get some time turners and go backwards and then record it. (laughs) We all just stay home next year. What? No. <laughs> no. I know. That was, that was like, no, no, it, it was a very, forget it. I joke. No, well. Okay. It's time for just flat out. No. No. I, she, I mean, I, I live in LA, so it, it is home for me. It's true. I live at the convention center. You have a little Don't corner. Don't tell anyone. I found a hall. You had a hall. I live here now. Um. All right. So some pretty interesting and kind of relevant news, both to us and a lot of you other content creators out there. Um, really coming on the heels of our conversation about level the pain field um, and how streamers, you know, are trying to make money in content creation. Twitch Prime will no longer include ad-free viewing. So this has been a very uh, talked about story this week. So this write-up comes from Polygon. Subscribers won't experience ad-free, ad-free viewing experiences starting next month as the platform exchanges to one of its most popular features. Twitch announced that ad-free viewing experiences wouldn't be available through Prime accounts beginning September 14th. New subscribers won't be able to reap those privileges at all, but people who signed up for the annual subscription will get a little leeway. Quote, Twitch Prime members with full or excuse me, Twitch Prime members with monthly subscriptions will continue to get ad free viewing until October 15th. If you already have an annual subscription or if you upgrade to an annual subscription before September 14th, you will continue with ad free viewing until your next renewal date. So that's kind of a nice workaround if you guys are concerned about this you could either re-up your subscription now or buy a new subscription uh really like i would do it like september 13th or right before (laughs) so you get the full year out of it um continuing on people who want their twitch viewing experience to remain ad free are going to have to sign up through twitch turbo which is essentially like a mini twitch prime but with fewer advantages turbo subscribers is um the main advantage is just being able to go ad free of course this program was introduced back in 2013 and cost 8.99 a month while the prime membership cost 10.99 
Um, quote, advertising is an important source of support for the creators who make Twitch possible. This change will strengthen and expand that advertising opportunity for creators so they can get more support from their viewers for doing what they love. We want Twitch to remain a place where anyone can enjoy one of a kind interactive entertainment and ads allow us to continue making Twitch the best place for creators to build communities around the things they love and make money doing so, Twitch said in the post. So before we tackle that piece of hot garbage, um, Twitch, Prime, <laughs> Twitch Prime subscriptions will continue to focus on providing free games with Prime and in-game loot every month, monthly channel subscriptions, and exclusive badges. And losing the ability... Um, still losing the ability to watch streamers without encountering ads is upsetting for subscribers, especially people who don't want to purchase a Twitch Prime subscription for free games and Turbo for ad-free viewing. Because if you wanted to get both, you would have to now pay eighteen ninety nine a month to get access to ad-free viewing and the free games program. And so there's been... I mean, this is this is kind of crappy for a lot of reasons, but the the free game thing was something that I thought was an interesting take because... Several people's comments who I read online had mentioned that they are Mac users and that they don't ever get the opportunity to really take advantage of some of those free games because a lot of them don't have parity on Mac. And that's something I never thought about uh, because I don't have a Twitch Prime subscription and because I'm not super active on on Twitch. But ladies, what do you I want to hear Steimer talk about this because she was just oh. shaking her head the whole time. Well, I'm shaking my head because they're like, this is an important source of income for creators. And I'm like, the only creators that can even use ad revenue sources are your partners, which is such a small percentage of your platform. Right. It's like, what are you on about? What are you talking about? Like, no, mm -hmm. it's not. Well, even Most people on Twitch make money from tips or subscribers. They don't make that much money off of ads. And doing this, I do not think is going to help them. No, and in fact, I saw a lot of streamers who were like, cool, I'm turning off ads on my channel now. Wait, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm admittedly not super familiar with Twitch and Twitch Prime and Twitch Turbos and all of that. So by streamers turning off ads on their channel, is it because they know they're not going to be making much money from it anyway, so they want to appease their audience? Or am I totally misunderstanding? I mean, I don't I, – I never made it to the advertising revenue stage, so I don't know what their cut is like. I don't know how much money they're leaving on the table with that. Do you know, Andrea? Um, so – I was talking to Tim about this on Games Daily because kind of funny, obviously streams quite a bit on Twitch five days a week um, across, you know, the morning show and Games Daily and then the random gameplay streams that they do. And he was talking about how even them as like a mid-tier uh, streamer compared to obviously, you know, you're like Dr. Disrespects and your ninjas and people who are having millions of people um following and subscribing to them he was saying that it's laughable that they think that this is going to give creators any more money and when you're talking about a streamer as large as kind of funny saying that this is laughable it really makes you take pause and go well then who is going to benefit from this because Twitch. that's a full-time well i mean as far as streamers are concerned sure. it's like oh, the people no who are already making you know tons of money from subscriptions so the way that the the thing that I didn't understand until I dug into it a little bit more was it seems like it operates pretty similar to YouTube in the sense that, you know, when we upload a video to our channel on YouTube, we have the opportunity to monetize it or not. And we choose to monetize our videos to help support uh, the work that we do here. And just like you can choose to do that on Twitch. And so it sounds like that a lot of streamers, based off what Steimer is saying, have decided, hey, we're just not going to monetize these through ads because we make money through through subs instead mm. yeah and to, it's to be clear like not everyone has the luxury of being able to select that i believe it's only partners um i don't think affiliates can turn off ads i'm but i also don't think i don't i don't remember i i can't remember i read something earlier today and have probably forgotten it but i believe that's how it works um and so yeah, I think they're basically doing that because they know it's a bad viewing experience for their audience and they would rather have a better experience for them because watching ads, especially on Twitch, like a lot of times people, the advertisers will just buy um, all of the revenue, or uh, not the revenue, all of the, uh, what's it called, stock. So like Inventory. there's like three of the same ad in a row, in mm. a row, wow, in a row. <laughs> I can speak today. Got you. Fine. Um, but yeah, so like this is just not 
a great move. It doesn't feel good. And also what I found was interesting is like a lot of uh, their money belts are going to be tightening over there at Twitch because I believe I read somewhere that they're trying to double their sales targets in the next year. I'm like, you're trying to double? That's that's crazy town. You know, I, I think Amazon is finally like, hey, you need to make some money. Well, so like <laughs> this is the thing, right? And I mean, I've been having conversations with other creators and people, and we obviously, you know, really enjoy using Twitch as a platform, and we're streaming there earlier tonight. Um, it's just I can't help but see the explosive growth that the platform has had over the last five years and go, how is that sustainable? How is that growth not just going to collapse underneath of itself? Because I saw that same thing happen to the MCNs. Like, look at that. Oh, there's like MCMs are virtually non-existent now, or if they do exist, they're much smaller. They, d they don't tailor to the same type of content. Um, or they're more owned and operated like your Defy Medias versus like the machinimas of old. And it, it just kind of seems to me that Twitch was like, you know, we're going gangbusters and we've got billions of views worldwide and hundreds of millions of users. And that's all so amazing that they can bring content to like esports tournaments and small streamers and big streamers and talk shows and painting and all kinds of content to people around the world. But it all just seems so unsustainable. And mm -hmm. I think YouTube was able to really survive through that growth phase that they also had because they were ultimately supported by Google's AdSense, right? And Google's infrastructure underneath of it all. And Amazon, while they do have an incredible worldwide internet infrastructure and the ability to sell ads, um, it's just, it was kind of a different beast, you know? And I just, I fear for all of the people that we know that work there, you know? Like, what if they can't hit these targets? Does that mean that they're gonna do another layoff? You know, like they had earlier this year where we saw so many people from their production team, like legacy Twitch people um, that, you know, got let go. It makes me really, really kind of anxious, you know, because I I hope that they have some other plans in mind. It just the whole thing of it just feels really shitty for creators. And that sucks. And that sucks that they got this big because of streamers building the platform much like youtube got big because of people uploading their content to their channels and it feels like this is the wrong call sorry i'm so i'm confused it looks like twitch prime no longer includes ad free viewing and that costs 11 dollars a month but if you pay nine dollars a month for twitch turbo you can skip the ads yes so right. you have to buy both now so now you have to get two things oh you have to get two things okay so I was thinking about this and I'm a very casual like TV watcher and I know some people love watching Twitch and they watch it probably more than they watch your typical television. You know, you have shows like kind of funny games daily. They probably watch every day. They probably have their streamers that they watch on a regular basis. And to them that might be like their cable television. So I was thinking I would happily spend, you know, 19, 20 bucks a month for my cable subscription to be able to skip all of the commercials. And so maybe if you look at it that way, it's not, and if they were to frame it that way, maybe it would have been an easier pill to swallow. Steimer's shaking her head. Well, what do you just think? because the problem with this is you are taking something away. It's right. And, and whenever you do that, regardless of what it is, it's going to feel it. bad. You can't super spin. We take this thing away from you. Mm -hmm. No, totally. I get that 100%. So I understand why they can't say we're just doing this because of X, Y, Z. But I think if it's, again, it's kind of comes out of the, to that transparency thing that we all want. We see the BS PR speak that you're giving us, but maybe if this had never been something they had to take away in the first place and they were just say, Hey, ad free viewing for 20 bucks a month. I'd be like, all right, that's worth it. Like if they were like, we are, well, that would also feel bad, but combining them in some way and like so it's a whatever you get both for $15 a month or some crap I don't know what they would do right. but uh yeah that might feel less weird but I also thought it was weird when Twitch Prime came around because they had Turbo and I was like well what's the point of Turbo then if you have Prime like the what so they're rectifying that but a little a little not not great timing <laughs> So Got this it. all leads into the to the next story because Twitch Prime came about as an added value for Amazon Prime, and Amazon Prime Prime recently got a price hike, and I think that this is probably 
all connected, like on the back end somewhere, right? Like somebody along the line said, hey, why are we giving away this thing for free over here when we used to charge people for it because they're paying for this thing over here? We should just charge them for everything. And um, it's, a ba it's a bad call. And in addition to charging for everything, <laughs> they're not just taking away ad-free subscriptions for Twitch Prime. They're also eliminating Amazon's 20% discount on game pre-orders. So this write-up also comes from Polygon. Um, starting August 28th, Amazon announced that Prime members will receive store credit instead as an incentive to pre-order video games through Amazon, a ma marking a major change to one of the membership's best benefits. So, of course, that membership being Amazon Prime. Only pre-orders of, quote, select video games will come with the $10 store credit promotion according to Amazon's terms and conditions. Once a customer has pre-ordered a qualifying item, they must wait up to 35 days to receive their $10 via email, and that credit will then only be valid for 60 days act after activation. This is a surprising change to one of Amazon Prime's biggest benefits for console owners. Back in January 2016, the company unveiled the discount on both pre-orders and recent game releases, meaning Prime members could regularly get a deal on high-priority, big-budget titles so long as they bought them early. Amazon Prime members aren't alone in losing their savings. Best Buy Gamers Club unlocked a competing subscription service. It also came with a 20% discount, shut down earlier this summer. And Best Buy's remaining membership program, My Best Buy, also gives buyers $10 in credit for pre-ordering certain popular games. It's not a great day. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's bad. And, like... The, the Amazon discount is is disheartening. Um, at least they're kind of giving you something in return. It's like I didn't when I talked about this story earlier on Games Daily, I did not realize the stipulation that you have to wait up to 35 days to receive the credit and then you have 60 days to use it. Like this seems like such a bullshit coupon. You know, those coupons that are like 25% off and then you get to the store and they're like, did you read the fine print that's illegible at the bottom? Actually, nothing in your orders actually qualifies for 25% off. And you're like, yeah. this is garbage. Uh, I yeah. mean, the the Brit in me is like, there's probably, you know, some reason for this. But then the Steimer the in me is they're like, the Steimer in me is money. like, yeah, yeah. The Steimer in me is like, this is, a really sort of kind of shady way of being very convoluted and who's going to know that you had, it's only valid for two months. Like credit, it's like getting a gift card and having a gift card expire. Like that hasn't happened in a very, very long time. They got rid of that. Right. And the fact that you have to wait up to 35 days to receive it. I feel like that's an incentive to like not use Amazon. Whatever. Well, yeah, I mean, there's just no reason to pre-order your games there anymore. You can just yeah. buy them regular if you weren't planning on pre-ordering it. But, um, yeah, I guess somebody, I feel like someone at Amazon was <laughs> taking a look at their books recently. Right? <laughs> and was like, yeah. wait a minute, why are we giving away 20% over here? No one ever expected this. This was us being nice. Let's take it away. It's all about that money, honey. Yeah, I think what this is going to do ultimately, I mean, it certainly doesn't bode well because Amazon has historically had not a great track record with shipping video games anyway. Um, it's just going to maybe push people to either buy digital direct from the platform holder from the Xbox Live Store or from PSN or the eShop or wherever you buy your games, Steam. Um, and when it comes to, to Twitch, this is really just going to devalue Twitch Prime, I believe, to a point where they're probably just going to eliminate Twitch Prime altogether. Because if you no longer get the ad-free viewing... You know, like, kind of what's the point? Like, I know, like, the big thing is, like, you get Amazon Prime, you get Twitch Prime, and you can use that $5 subscription to go to your favorite streamer. But if you're no longer getting the ad-free views, why wouldn't you just use Turbo, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, because it just most people do have Amazon Prime. So, like, you just have Twitch Prime. Right, but you have to go, over, you have to go <laughs> every 30 days and assign it. Oh, I know. It's stupid. Because they don't, again, they don't want to, like, lose that money. And if you don't assign it anywhere, I assume that it's just banked for Amazon. Yep. I wonder, and this is going to sound silly, because you see this a lot where people offer, like, a really bomb-ass deal up front, right? You know, you have Amazon Prime, you're going to get a discount. with This Best Buy Gamers Club, this Twitch shenaniganry. It's like it all works for a while. It gets everyone in. And then, obviously, I don't want to be dramatic and say the rug's pulled out from under you, but I think you know what I'm trying to say here. And so it's... 
it's just bizarre how it, it gets people in and then they're like, okay, we got everyone in now let's change it up and make more money off of this. And obviously the numbers have to make sense for people to do this so often, but it just, I don't know. It just looks so bad. It feels bad, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate, you know, Britt, what you were saying about, well, if I spend so much time on Twitch, it's worth the money for me to pay to get the ads taken off. But the way that I look at it is there are so many of these subscription services. It feels like everybody has a digital service, HBO, Hulu, Netflix, Twitch Prime, Amazon, you know, like it feels like by the time you tally up all of these individual subscriptions, you might as well be paying for cable. Yep. <laughs> Welcome Honestly, to yeah. the future. It's like, hey, everyone's like, cable's expensive. Mer. And they're like, okay, you can just pay for this one thing and this one thing and this one thing and this one thing. And, this one thing. and, it's like and then you're just. $10 a month. And then you add yeah, it all exactly. up. Exactly. And then it all adds up. And you're like, yeah. I'm paying the exact same amount, but now only only specifically have the things that I said I would watch versus the plethora of other stuff that I I wonder in the future mm -hmm. if there's ever going to be a thing where everyone kind of like forms a partnership right and they're like okay we're going to get Netflix and HBO and Hulu and we're all going to do the same thing for a flat rate and it's I mean I doubt it that would be I a very convoluted convoluted thing but well, I, I mean, wonder that's, if that's what PlayStation View is right right oh, crazy futures weird kids who knows well, where we'll much. go Speaking of the future, don't expect an Assassin's Creed game. Well, just in 2019. Ha! That was good. It's not going away forever. Of course not. We love Assassin's Creed. Um, so IGN has this write-up. Like 2016, 2019 will be a year without an Assassin's Creed game. Speaking with GameSpot during Gamescom, Ubisoft CEO Yves Guillermo revealed that his company will not release a new entry into the annualized franchise. Quote, on Assassins, we had a game in 2017 and we have one this year. We are not going to have a full-fledged Assassins next year. It's just because the teams were working separately, so we have two games now, one year after the other. But next year, you're not going to have a fully-fledged one. End quote. There won't be... There won't just not be a new main Assassin's Creed entry. Ubisoft won't release any sort of spin-off or smaller game. Instead... Guillermo explained that Ubisoft plans to extend this year's entry, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, as much as possible through DLC. Quote, what you'll have is lots of content coming on Assassin's Creed Odyssey. The team really wants to give on a regular basis some new possibilities for play. So when you get Odyssey this year, you're going to get in for a couple of years, actually. Guillermo did not detail what any of that content would be, of course, but Eurogamer reports that it could include an Atlantis-themed expansion. Um, so this is uh, not really surprising. In fact, I think it's a, a great thing that they're going to take another break. Uh, I really enjoyed my time with Origins and could probably still be playing it now. I did dip into both DLC packs, but if they had added more DLC, I would have spent more time running around in that world, you know, trying to make friends with the hippos. I kind of wish they'd <laughs> taken a break this year and released, <laughs> released the uh, Odyssey next year. I mean, me too, because I... Okay, here's the thing. I do too, but it's not because I'm not excited for Odyssey. It's just that I'm prioritizing other games over yeah, it. Yeah, there's just a lot coming out this year, and there's a lot of long games coming out this year, and we just had an Assassin's Creed that seems like it's going to feel somewhat similar. Granted, yes, they're changing a lot of things. I'm very excited about it, but I wish they would have been like, you know what, We're even if it was pretty ready, we'll put it on ice for a bit and then like release it the next year. Because having two... Back to back, and then taking a break seems odd to me. So you're saying you like because they obviously have content planned for 2019, so maybe yeah. focus on that and maybe release that or do something. Assassin's Creed one is one of those games where I think they could take longer breaks than they do, mm -hmm. um, and be just fine. So, <laughs> but I thought yeah, it was there's just so much to do in them. Because mm -hmm. I admittedly don't follow the Assassin's Creed franchise very closely. So it sounds like the reason we have two games this year is because... Sorry, my dog is trying to crawl underneath my desk and he's yeah, 85 pounds. Yeah. Um, it's because they have two teams working on it separately. So do you think that means the next game that comes out in 2020 will have both teams working on it at the same time? No. 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 I mean, generally, multiple teams work on Assassin's Creed. Um, but I, I don't think that they're going to like have like an all-hands-on-deck kind of mentality because they're going to have to have that team start working on what's coming next after whatever Assassin's Creed is right. happening in 2020. And I, I mean, 
Assassin's Creed as a franchise, I feel like it, it's going to take a, like a major bomb for that franchise to die. And I'm really excited that they keep innovating and keep um, iterating and adding to it. And I really loved the changes that they made in Origins. And just like Steimer, I'm excited about the even more changes that they're making with Odyssey and adding these, you know, narrative branching stories and making it a little bit more RPG and a little bit less action adventure. I hope that it doesn't get too far away from its stealth roots though, but um, I'm really just looking forward to seeing whatever this team puts out. I mean, it's hard for me to be like they can do no wrong since they kind of, you know, did a little bit of wrong with a couple of those titles in there. Um, but <laughs> the bulging eyeballs, eyeballs in unity, man. Oh my gosh. Let's not even talk about unity. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm looking forward to it. I don't mind. Take a year off. Sounds good to me. Um, I'm fine with them coming this year too. I know it's going to be tough, but like I, I hear you say there's so many games coming this year. <laughs> Brit with the, that's what she said pillow. But I feel like every year is like that. Like every year, so, it's stacked. Uh, yeah, you're not wrong. Games are getting longer and they are becoming more frequent, yeah, girl. Or at least it feels like they are, but that also might just be that my time to play games is reducing and therefore any amount seems overwhelming at times. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're, Brett and I, I are both agree. like snickering, holding our that's what she said pillows up to the camera. Oh, we do. Couldn't help ourselves. No. Um, speaking of, um, I wanted to talk about one more delay. Uh, I know we didn't put it on the, the show notes here, um, but before we um, break, Bloodstained has been delayed until 2019, and the Vita version is just outright canceled. So this oh, write-up, no. comes, I know, right? So this write-up comes from Game Informer. Bloodstained, a kickstarted game from former Castlevania head Koji Igarashi, will not be releasing until 2019. Additionally, the game will not be releasing on the PlayStation Vita as originally planned. While the target date for the game was 2017, it slipped to 2018 after the original developers ED Creates or Inti Creates were taken off the project. Uh, Inti Creates still continues to work on the NES-styled prequel Bloodstained: Curse of the Moon, while Igarashi's employer Artplay continued developing the title. Today, the game was officially delayed to 2019 confirming suspicions it would not make it out this year. When the Kickstarter campaign launched, Igarashi included Wii U and Vita stretch goals, despite neither system supporting Bloodstained's use of Unreal Engine 4. Artplay contracted Armature Studio, former Retro Studios developers that made games like Arkham Origins, Blackgate, and ReCore to port Unreal Engine 4 to the two older systems and thus align the game to work there. The Wii U version was canceled in favor of the Switch last year, but the Vita port remained the same. Igarashi reasoned that the development on the Vita version no longer made sense, especially since Sony has discontinued the portable system. As such, Vita backers can receive a full refund or switch to their choice of another of the game's version. So, well, I, when, I, and when I say discontinued, it's obviously discontinuing. Um, you know, Sony announced that not too long ago. This is kind of a bummer, but, uh, you know, kind of collateral damage from a Kickstarter. You know, I feel... We have... A dear WGG Ooh. that I just on the fly insert in here. And I have not read your question before. Brandon K. Gone. So this better be good. Hello, what's good? I hope this finds you well. This week it was announced that Bloodstained Ritual of the Night was not only delayed into 2019, but the Vita version of the game was also canceled, which leaves me with this. Does Bloodstained having been developed for so long, pri primarily through crowdfunding, a sign that said crowdfunding... Crowdfunding is not a sustainable business model for game development, primarily due to a lack of set deadlines. What are your thoughts about not only this, but other highly anticipated projects like Shenmue and Psychonauts 2 that also have a significant amount of crowdfunding and likewise have unclear timetables? Yeah, so Shenmue and Psychonauts, I believe, also had like a publisher, publisher funding and crowdfunding, so they're a mix. I do think it's interesting talking about crowdfunding being a a soul, um, wow, brain has turned off today. <laughs> uh, the soul, fuck, what is the, what's the word I'm looking for? Soul source of revenue? Yes, it is source. Thank you, my darling, my dearest, my lifeblood. <laughs> um, <laughs> being the sole source of your funding is probably not a great idea because I, I don't know if it's necessarily just the lack of set milestones for the game development because things go wrong, like, Game development, like we've mentioned before earlier in this episode, it's very tricky. 
And um, not only is it tricky, one of the things that publishers do, which a lot of people like get upset about, is help kind of edit slash hold developers' feet to the fire in order to make their deadlines and get those things done. And when you remove that, yes, you probably get a more creative uh, idea out of it, but that also means it might get canceled because like the, per the if you don't have a good project lead on that title, things can just go wrong very quickly. Um, and so another good example of this, but the game did come out, thank the Lord, um, was the game that I was super excited about and mentioned uh, on a few shows ago, Hero U. So Hero U I crowdfunded back when I still worked at IGN, I think. Wow. I think I still worked at IGN. But I was definitely in San Francisco, so it was a very long time ago because um, I moved away from San Francisco two years ago. And I'm pretty sure it was like at least two years. So it was like a four- or five-year game development on a top-down like adventure game. So I'm not surprised when crowdfunding on games goes belly up because of everything I've just said. I'm not going to repeat it all. Yeah, no, <laughs> no you, don't need, you don't need to repeat it all. Um, I, it's just, it's disappointing when something like this that got overwhelming support from crowdfunding, um, that it, that they still can't make it work and that maybe they were just over ambitious. And it's like, it's tough because Kickstarters are in this weird space between wanting to be realistic with their production goals and then also when they get a lot of support wanting to invigorate the community to keep giving by giving these stretch goals and maybe what it was was just that they overreached I mean the idea that you know they were going to use Unreal 4 to develop it knowing that it would be incompatible with a couple of the platforms that they promised, but they're like, oh, that's a future me problem. Future me will find someone to port it. It'll be no, no issue. It, it kind of is like, it feels, it feels unfair. I mean, so, and just to remind you guys, this game, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, made $5.5 million on Kickstarter through over 64,000 backers. So of those, I have to imagine a fair amount of those wanted this game on, you know, these two handheld platforms. So I, I think the, the, the good news that's coming out of this is that not only are they offering people the opportunity to get it out on a different platform, and obviously Nintendo Switch is a nice portable platform, but they could also get a full refund, which is really the most important thing to say, hey, Oof, you know. How's that going to work? I, you know They've what? They've spent that money. Well, that's a problem they're going to have to figure out, I guess. That's another future me problem for yep. them, which is going to bankrupt their company, so they might want to be careful. Yeah, well, I mean, well, with Kickstarter, there's no there's no real guarantees that you're ever going to get anything. Um, John bought me a piece of smart luggage in 2015, and they've still never shipped it. <laughs> that's oh, like, no kidding. Yeah. I heckle them on Facebook on the regular, like, where's my luggage? <laughs> <laughs> it had a butterfly on it. Where is luggage? it? I want it. A, ca a calendar reminder. Huggle yeah. for my smart luggage. <laughs> Where the heckin' is my luggage? I mean, even if you got your smart luggage, if that was in 2015, it's probably not very smart anymore. It's probably well, so ancient. Thing. It was so cool back then. No, no yeah. luggage had batteries. It's called no, all the luggages luggage have batteries. Supported iPhone Regular two. ass luggage. I know. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I don't want to get off too much on a tangent. Um, wow. Before we take a break, I just want to run down. Uh, I saw this. Uh, the Gamescom Best of Show winners. Real quickly, um, just in case you guys were curious, uh, best PS4 game went to Spider-Man, Xbox went to Ori and Will of the Wisps, Nintendo went to Super Smash Brothers, PC went to Anno 1800, Mobile went to Shadow Gun War Games, Action went to Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, which I'm going to talk about in the next segment. I got to play it. Um, best DLC was Destiny 2's Forsaken, Casual Game was Team Sonic Racing Family, Super Mario Party. Puzzle skill game went to Ori and Will of the Wisps. Best racing to Forza Horizon 4. Role playing to Divinity Original Sin 2 yeah, Definitive so Edition. Good. Simulation to Farming Simulators 19. Online social game, Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Best sports game, FIFA 19. And best strategy went to Total War 3 Kingdoms. Seems right. Yeah, Divinity. Woo -woo. August 31st, Divinity Original Sin 2. Coming to PS4 and Xbox One. We all plug. know she's excited. Look at the excitement on her face, ladies and gentlemen. Hashtag plug. Okay, we're going to take Hashtag a short break. Paid. And when we come back, we're going to talk about what we've been playing. So stick with us. We'll see you in a few. It's segment 
segment three of the Putz and Food Fans podcast, and we are here to talk about what we've been playing this week. So it's been an interesting one. Um, I've played a bunch of stuff. Um, yeah. And uh, before we get into any of that, though, um, you guys may have realized that last week we were supposed to read the Turbo Patron names, and we totally forgot about it. That's Oops, on us. Amazing. But good news, we've got the list now, we're ready to go. So, of course, if you guys are new to the What's Good Games podcast or you haven't been over to patreon.com slash what's good games, we have a tier that allows you to get a personal shout out on the show. And we love our community over there. We have a really great group of supporters who um, make posts and interact with each other. And we have a lot of different options. So if you guys love the content that we make and you want to help support us and help us get equipment, help us get to community meetups. Um, we would love you to be part of that group at patreon.com slash what's good games. Britt, are you ready? I am. It's also worth noting that if you do sign up for the turbo patron tier, you also get access to weekly pre-show live streams and other awesome things. Secret segment. Secret (laughs) segment. Dear WGG. Dear WGG. You can yeah. send us questions. There's a lot, a lot of bang for your buck, ladies and gentlemen. That is all. We appreciate you. Steiner, do, do you want to get in this rotation or do you want to oh observe? Boy. I'm a little scared. Like, I feel like you guys barely make it work with the two of you. I'm worried, <laughs> like, throwing in a third will just mess everything up. <laughs> okay. There's only one way to find out. I mean, we can let's try, it. but it, it might be it. real bad. Okay, oh, so, it's gonna get real ugly, but let's oh, do it. Oh man, I'm gonna make it. Okay, be but you can't, you can't use your little down key because it screws up our Google Docs name because I can't see the name above yours. Oh. Wait, what? I can't do my down key? She can see no. your cursor in the in the in the doc. Yeah, no, that's too. That's 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 a stipulation. I'm not sure I can agree with. <laughs> <laughs> How am I supposed to keep track? Just, just count one, two, three, baby, one, two, three. We just got this. zoom, just yeah, zoom yeah. out. No, you can you, do it. Okay. You, you, <laughs> okay, okay, I'm gonna start, and then Britt will go, and then Stiver will go, and then we'll just continue <laughs> around. Thank you for your patience. If we mispronounce your name, we sincerely apologize. All right, Aaron Saxton, Adrian A. Rock Williams, Alberto Andreas Videla, Alex Regopoulos, Amar Dillon, uh, Andrew Susan. Anthony Murphy, Susan. Ariella Furman, Ash Fulkin, Bo Hears Holsa, Benjamin Pardy, mate, Bernie Monsanto, Bill Stilwell, Are you Billy Shibley, <laughs> Brian Harper, Brooke Larie, Asia Harris. Finally, so, uh, so good to finally meet her in person. Uh, yeah, she's wonderful. Yes, nice to meet you, Brooke. Carl Peterson, Kathy Lucas, Chandler. Chris Campbell. Sorry. <laughs> that was his face. Cool rat daddy. <laughs> Christian Rodriguez. Dale Sun. David Icolucci. Dominic Weller. Donato Sinicho III. Dustin Lewis. E. Benjamin Checkness. E. Irizari. Sorry. Elizabeth Brooke. El Moshel. Emily Kent. Ferris Atea? How do you say that? Atea? I think I so. Know. I mess it up every month. Ferris doesn't mind. Flying Saucer Media. Gary Wilburn. Geek Heart Games. Jeff Hutchinson. Geo Corsi. Gregory Horton. Ivan Bajarano. Bajarano. Bajarano? Bajarano. <laughs> Jared Howard. Jason Davis. Jason Erickson. Jay McCrackley. <laughs> Aw, oh, Jason Demers. <laughs> Jennifer McNichol. Jesse Spencer. Jessica Salisbury. Joe. Joe Kennison, <laughs> Joe Schleif, John Drake, Kevin Dunkel, Kevin Komaki, Kia B, Kyle Heyman, oh, Leviathan Masters Barella. That's an oh, amazing so name. Bad. Lewis Creech, Lincoln Davis, Lisa Marie Gritton, 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 Lucas Cheney, Marcus Brown, Mark Drawstrip, Martha Emery. Oh boy, Martin T. Asarud. A- as Sarud. Sorry, dude. As-a-rude. Matt <laughs> Howell. Matthew Godere. Michael Shenholtz. Mikey Phillips. Mohammed Fahim Mohammed. Male Bittner. Nam Bui. Nicole hu- Yeah, Bui. Nicole Humphrey. No clip. Ozzy Meha. Paige Porter. Pete Shoemaker. 
Uh, Professor Metal Gear. Wow, I said Professor Weird. <laughs> Pure Blue Octopus. <laughs> R.J. Bryan. Re- Regan or Reagan? Reagan. Reagan. Reagan Imsen. Ripped Gamers. Robert Herrero. Roland Bala. Ross Haney. Sam. <laughs> Shane. Uh, Rayum. R- Rayum. Rayum. I think. Rayum. Simon Bergstead. <laughs> Dion Stevenson. Steph Wu. Stephanie Fitzwilliams. Woo-hoo. Steven Insler. Sydney Carr. Tara Bruno. Teresa Enart. Timothy Bennett. Tom Bach. Tommy Larson. Tony Han. Trent or Pennington. Han. Trevor Stonky. Troy Spradlin. Tyler McCall. Zach Hershey. Hershey kisses are good. We got to the Z's, mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much to all of our Turbo patrons. We love you guys, and we appreciate all of the support. Again, patreon.com slash what's good games if you want to get your monthly shout out and be part of the awesome community there. Um, now, without further ado, let's talk about what we've been playing. Um, so, Britt, I see here you've been playing something called Guts and Glory. What's that? I- I have. So I'm still knee deep in Dragon Quest XI. I can talk about that next week. Very, Yay. very excited about it. But for now, yeah, I've been playing a game called Guts and Glory. This is developed by Hack Jack, published by Tiny Build. And it's just one of those dumb games. I say dumb rolls, and you'll know why after I explain it. So Friday night rolls around. I've been playing Dragon Quest for like 12 hours straight. I just need kind of like a palate cleanser here. And Jason finds this ragdoll physics game where you play as several different characters and you try to complete courses. The problem with these courses is that there are chainsaws, there are blades that are trying to decapitate you, there are cannonballs being shot at you, uh, arrows, et cetera, et cetera. You have to like drive up ramps, physics-based ragdoll thing. And it, it was like maybe 10 bucks when we, we purchased it. And you just go around and you try to kind of like crazy taxi style where you have to hit like the little uh, checkpoints on the ground. You have to get your vehicle. So there's one vehicle where you're like a husband and wife and you're sitting on a bicycle. There's one where you're this dude in an ATV. There's one where you're a family in a car and they all have different physics associated with them. So we just poured ourselves a couple glasses of whiskey and just played this game for like three hours. And we just laughed until we, until we cried. So not something, obviously, like a very AAA deep, you know, immersive game. But if you're just looking for something silly to play, it's single player. But it's fun to hand a controller back and forth. This try looks to... like a 3D version of Happy Wheels. I'm not familiar with Happy Wheels, but yeah, it could be. So Happy Wheels was a really big um, game a couple of years back. 2D. It, it, it kind of is like Trials, right? So it's uh, side-scrolling yeah. when you're on a bike. Uh, well, there's a variety of, uh, of vehicles and the ragdoll physics and you have to go through these obstacles and you can like get cut in half and you can like bleed everywhere. And this is so over the top. Um, it's just really, like you said, it's just really funny. Like ragdoll physics are just so funny. I should also note that I thought of Simer cause you would not like this game Simer cause it's very oh. gory, very bloody, like lots mm-hmm. of blood spurting everywhere. You'll have bones like sticking out of your body. Now granted, it's not very realistic. No, the graphics I, are pretty. That's... The graphics are pretty dumbed down. Yeah, exactly. I, it's not that I wouldn't like that. I don't mind like cartoon. But like God it's of when War it looks was... really like it's realistic that I get queasy. Mm, okay. um, like I think Trials is really funny, and the sounds it makes when you like splat against a wall just like it makes me giggle because I think it's weird and I also it's one of my favorite things when you accident like when if you rag physics down the stairs there's some funny GTA like wasted things where you just like crumble down exactly bones and I'm like that's amazing I love ragdoll yeah yeah so you probably like it it's real fun like fun and funny so that's what I played other than that it's been all Dragon Quest all Dragon Quest well I mean the reason they gave it to you so early is because they're like hey this is a long game you're going to be playing, playing this game forever. <laughs> um, so, of course, the both of us have been playing a Legend of Soul Guard. Um, on the pre-show, we gave some gameplay, but I just wanted to give some of my impressions. And, I mean, obviously, take it with a grain of salt if you want because, you know, King is a sponsor on the podcast and is a sponsor of the pre-show. And they obviously paid us to play the game for you guys. But uh, what I really love about this game – and what I love about King as a publisher is that they have a really robust set of developers that they work with. 
Uh, Snowprint is the name of the developer who made this game. And um, the game I believe that I was trying to think of on the stream that I couldn't was Might and Magic Clash of Heroes. Mm -hmm. um, from back from 2009 on the DS. So if you guys played that, so the gameplay is, uh, is similar in certain aspects, but it doesn't have the more adventure RPG elements that that game has. But I've just like really gotten hooked and really had a really great time playing. And I didn't think that I would be super into a mobile game because usually the only thing I play on my phone is Candy Crush. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can just whip it out uh, and, you know, play for a couple of minutes and then I'm done. <laughs> I was waiting. I was waiting for it. I got you. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm having a really great time with it too. It's become part of my nightly routine. Just pick it up and play. And I like the way this doesn't sound dumb. It stimulates my brain. It's like you have to actually stop and look at these pieces in front of you or these creatures and figure out what's the best way to move them and insert them. And uh, I'm having a wonderful time. I was kind of jaded, um, jaded, jaded maybe about free to play games, mobile games. Because whenever I would play them, it was like a constant in your face. Buy this. Visit our shop. Do this. Buy it. And Harry Potter just like ruined me, the Harry Potter mobile game. And so I was so pleasantly surprised that a free-to-play mobile game can be very well done. Because I had never played any before besides ones that were kind of crappy. Yeah. So, yeah. It's – um, it's – and, and we talked about this, and so for people who maybe haven't uh, caught the live stream or you don't know, the game is, uh, its core is a turn-based RPG with match three puzzle mechanics. So it's kind of combining a couple different genres together. Um, there's creature collecting because each of your little minions that you send out onto the battlefield has a corresponding color and a class. You can upgrade them by collecting gems and ability dust. Uh, there's a campaign. There's a hero arena where you do head-to-head -head duels. There's dungeons. We have a guild, uh, What's Good Games Guild. So if you guys want to play and get in the guild, please message us. And I like that they've given a quite a variety of game modes. And as Britt mentioned, the microtransactions are very inobtrusive. Of course, there's certain things locked behind a time paywall to kind of encourage you to go check out other modes but even when I was playing for free because I got the game ahead of launch meaning the store wasn't unlocked so even if I wanted to buy things in the store I couldn't I never felt compelled to have to spend money to keep progressing and as Britt mentioned like there are several egregious games out there that do that and uh, that's not the case here. So um, I really enjoyed it. I think they're doing free to play well. Now uh, I'm going to have to see. Um, ha I had to probably remove my crutch because King uh, hooked us up with some in-game credits so that we could show off a bunch of stuff during the stream uh, before having to progress because the game just came out um, uh, last week. So now I'm like, oh, I'm kind of getting used to not working for it. I'm like, oh, I could just pay diamonds at the end when I die and keep playing. So I have <laughs> to kind of remove that. I will temptation. say I haven't redeemed anything from King. Um, just by the, It was just a convoluted thing. But I never got anything. So I've been playing this whole time without any crutches. And um, it's been wonderful. I, You know, if, if a level costs six power to play and you lose, you only lose about two power because they refund you like four of that power. So it's not like you're out everything. So it's really well done. Yeah, it's fun. I've had a lot, a, a lot of fun playing it. It's definitely going to be my go-to um, for the time being. Um, but I've played a lot of other things. Another phone game that I got to play that I haven't spent too much time with because I just got the build um, is a game called Reigns Game of Thrones. So you guys might be familiar with Reigns um, the card game that came, well, it's not really a card game. It's an adventure game, uh, that came to, I believe PC and, um, iOS and Android. Let me double check and make sure, um, rain game. Um, yes, it was on steam. So this was originally, um, launched in 2016. Uh, this is a devolver digital title, uh, created by a team called Nereal, Nereal. I think that's how you say that. And what's cool about this game is that they are putting out a Game of Thrones licensed version. So essentially, when you're playing, you swipe left for no and you swipe right for yes. 
So when you hold down um, your swipe before you complete the action, it'll give you a dialogue option. And then when you hold down the other direction, it'll give you another dialogue option. So essentially, this is a choose your own adventure game. So you'll get, uh, you'll, you'll start out. Uh, well, I started out, I don't know if everybody does, as Daenerys, mother of dragons, uh, uh, sitting on the Iron Throne. And then you'll recognize many characters from the franchise and you'll have interactions and how you interact with these characters, which dialogue option you pick, whether you're swiping left or swiping right, uh, will determine, you know, how you progress. And so the idea is to get as many moons as a ruler as possible. And if you die, if you pick something that doesn't work out, like the first time I played, uh, I tried to wake uh, my dragon, Drogon, and somehow I couldn't wake him and I got trapped like in the cave with him and I died. Oh, um, oh. And then oh, I became, to death? what was that? Darved to death or something? What I, do you mean? I don't know. They don't, they don't really give you a lot of descriptors uh, because the style, the art style of the game is, so imagine you're holding your phone. It's literally like a, like a, like a magic card and that there's mm. like a, a face of the character. And then there's like a little bit of text at the top. It's very simple. Yeah. And so that you're not like watching big cutscenes or anything. It's just like a little bit. It's, it's like an on-screen text adventure game, but it's got some graphics. So it's not just a text adventure. But the gameplay is super simple. And I've been really enjoying my time with it because I, I love fuck, I love Game of Thrones. So this, <laughs> it, it seems so perfect. I actually never played the original game. And I just like the idea that you get to kind of see some characters interact and um some stuff is canon, some stuff obviously like liberties are taken, which I think is kind of fun. And um, so far, the most luck I've had is with Jon Snow, but um, I'm really looking forward to checking out all of the different characters that I can put onto the Iron Throne because you keep coming back to Melisandre, who was like, oh, who am I going to look into the fires and, and <laughs> put on the Iron Throne? It's really fun. It's a really cute little game. It's uh, going to launch in October of this year so really soon let me see if I can find the exact release date here for you guys they um, just put out a press release yesterday so it says here it's going to be available in the App Store Google Play and Steam for $3.99 and you can pre-order now at reignsgame.com so that's like a King Reigns R-E-I-G-N-S um, but there is no actual specific date within um, within the press release here. But uh, let me just read the description here in case my my description was making you a little confused. Um, <laughs> it ex uh, Reigns Game of Thrones extends beyond the HBO series and explores possible futures for key characters as seen through the fiery visions of Red Priestess Melisandre. Players can choose to rule as Cersei Lannister, Jon Snow, Daenerys Targaryen, Tyrion Lannister, Sansa Stark, and many more, while changing between each king and queen to face challenges and mysteries unique to their story. Melisandre's flames have proven hard to decipher and less than reliable, so players may encounter stories they do not expect peer into the flames and you may see Cersei rebuild the great sept of Baylor or discover what could happen to the seven kingdoms as Sansa Stark married Jamie Lannister Ooh, spicy yeah so players will choose characters to claim the iron throne while carefully navigating the complex relationships and hostile factions of the seven kingdoms employ ruthless tactics to outwit political rivals wield impervious charm on your fickle bannermen and maintain the balance in favor of people to extend Ooh. your reign to maybe one day survive the horrors of a winter in Westeros. Dun, dun, dun. That's, that's, a, really, that's a really well-written press release. Um, <laughs> <laughs> some of them are really bad. We get a lot of press releases, you yeah. guys. Um, so uh, I've been playing that. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Um, I'm just playing a test build, so I don't know what's going to change between now and when the game actually launches in October. I have to imagine some things will. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about, which I mentioned briefly earlier, was uh, Spyro and Sekiro. So Activision held a little preview event here in San Francisco um, ahead of Gamescom and uh, let me sit down and play. Now, I had the opportunity to see Sekiro up close at E3 and unfortunately just did not have the time with everything that we were doing there. So I was really glad to have a little bit more private experience because let's be honest, if I died a lot playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I'm definitely going to die more playing Sekiro. <laughs> <laughs> true so uh Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is of course uh a game that is being developed by From Software you know them from Bloodborne from the Souls series and other games and 
when this game was first shown off, I think a lot of people had expectations that it would be very similar to those games. And it certainly is in a number of ways, but it's doing something unique as well. I'm actually going to pull up my notes here um, so I can reference them. So they, in case you guys uh, are, are confused or haven't seen any of the um, details about this game, it's set in 1500 era Japan. Um, you play this uh, I don't know. I don't uh, calling him a ninja does not seem right. I don't know exactly like what his what his warrior's name is, but he has a shinobi prosthetic arm that includes a grappling hook. Uh, so there's 3D movement throughout the game. You can jump. There, there's combat. There's block. There's blocking. It's essentially a third person action game with stealth playing a key role. And because of the stealth system, assassinations are a big combat technique that you're absolutely going to want to use. Because if you go into an area where there's multiple enemies and you don't take a couple of them out quietly, it's not going to go well for you. Um, or at least it didn't go well for me. And <laughs> one of the things that I noticed right away during the demo that I was playing was that when I would come into an area, I would look around and some of the enemies were hard to spot because none of them were marked on the HUD. And I asked the, the development team that was there, I said, are you intentionally not marking the enemies on the HUD, and they're like, yeah, this is a hard game. Have you played our games? <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> they, damn. Okay, okay, listen, they didn't they didn't say that verbatim, but we were having right. a fun time, you know, because it was a really, it was a, an intimate appointment. It was just me and one other outlet. Um, and so we were just joking around because I went in there being like, listen, please don't judge me. <laughs> um, I've only played a little bit of Bloodborne, and the Souls games scare me. So I'm probably going to be very bad at your game. <laughs> They're like, do you want to capture? And I was like, no, nobody no. wants to see Where's me play. The baby ass baby mode. <laughs> yeah, but I tried it, you guys, and I th I think that's that's all I could <laughs> really say. We're so proud of you, girl. Thank you. So the combat in the game is all about a posture system, like a lot of the the games from from software. Um, it's you know you have to go in prepared. You have to while you're in these fights really be calculating about the moves that you're making you can't just button mash because you'll die very quickly it's about observing your enemy watching for your openings dodging a lot dodging more then you just keep dodging the whole fight um and then of course <laughs> dodge poke dodge yeah, poke yeah. dodge poke it's a lot of parrying too like the, the parry system and the blocking system the posture system is what they call it is it, like integral to the combat in this game um, so what's cool about it and what's a little bit different is because of the setting, there's some really vi uh, bright and vibrant environments, which we typically don't get in from software games. They're very like dark and dungeony. And the level very that great. I played was really pretty. The graphics looked beautiful and they really are embracing this um, this Japanese art aesthetic in uh, a really kind of like tangible way. So I really loved that about the game. And the combat system allows you to... Uh, kind of like combo some of your special abilities with your basic, you know, parry and, and, and slash techniques. And so you have a, a, a couple different abilities that you can rotate between and then they're kind of locked to like a meter at the bottom of the screen. And so it, it kind of gives you a deeper level of combat strategy to go, okay, well, do I want to go in with my throwing stars? Do I want to use my giant axe as like a heavy, a heavy attack when I get in close? Or do I want to light my sword on fire? Because that's a thing that you can do in this game. <laughs> can you run away? <laughs> I mean, yes, you can. You can absolutely run away. And there are, I, I think, think... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, finish, finish what you're going to say, and then I'll ask my question. Oh, I, 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 there, there might be some sections as well that you can maybe grapple hook around. But I found that I was getting so panicked, like running from the enemies, like hearing them <laughs> chasing me that I couldn't bother looking for the grappling point. So the grappling hook is really fun to use to move around and to get into stealth positions. Um, but while you're in combat and you're not in stealth anymore, it's a little bit more challenging. <laughs> so when you die in this game, is it like the Souls game and like Bloodborne, like you need to go back and retrieve all your shit? That is a good question that I don't have an answer for. Um, I do know that they have a checkpoint system like uh, the Souls games do, it's called the Sculptor Idol. And when you um, find one in the world, you obviously, uh, you know, like kind of like pray at this idol and then it refills all of your health gourds. So 
uh, that way you kind of know going you're set to go into the next section and you've got the checkpoint behind you. Um, that's a good question. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Were there difficulty <laughs> settings or was it just one? It was I, just... I did not see any difficulty settings that I could choose from because I asked. I was like, <laughs> is there an easy mode? And there was like, not in this build. And I was, and I think I You're just like that in this build. Does that mean I think I just didn't one? follow up on if there were difficulty settings or not. This is something that probably somebody else thought to ask. Let me look really quick while I'm because yeah, I don't want to. I'm really interested in this because I love 1500 feudal Japan stuff. Like that's right up my alley. But like I, I don't like getting really sad and angry during play video games, and I don't want to die a lot, and I don't want to have to actually pay attention to the combat sometimes and get away with it. Sometimes I'm just not, I got to yeah, get good. Sometimes it's nice to just have a little bit of mindless button mashing. I hear you. Yeah, that's what I do yeah. in the band. So when you, like, when you have a game where you have to be attentive all the time, I see obviously why that appeals to people. Absolutely. But that's just not always what you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a game like that, I want to lose myself in the surroundings and the, the, you know, the whole shebang. But the combat, I've just never been good at action combat like that. Never been at good least at it. Ghost of Tsushima sound like it'll be. It's got that Japan. There we go. Japan oh god, I'm so excited up. for that. So yeah. excited. Oh. So he is called a uh, shinobi, um, and which is I guess just another word for a ninja. And because uh, I didn't, I didn't, I kind of second guessed myself there. I'm just looking at some uh, other previews that came out this week from other folks <laughs> i love mashable's headline because it's exactly how i felt uh sekiro shadow side twice kicked my ass uh <laughs> that's true i was kind of embarrassed because the devs were watching me play and i was like oh that's watch, the worst stop watching me play i need to figure out how to play by myself so no one i like it when they watched me and britney play together because not for this game but oh, like, like any game we've <laughs> co-opted together has been fun yeah we're, we're often told that we're the most entertaining appointment Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, because you make your Brit face, but audible. <laughs> it's true. true. <laughs> Very true. You know, it's, it's what John said. You have a squirrel in your pants all the time. That's true. <laughs> I do. I need to come up with a name for said squirrel. Stanley the squirrel. All right. I like it. I'm looking at a GameSpot interview about Sekiro to see if there's anything about a, a difficulty mode as well. I know. But, it's time to put what me about on the when spot you die? What, have about, an what about collecting your stuff? I don't know. What about the death penalty in this game? See, there's got to be one, right? I didn't, I didn't play the Souls game, so I didn't think to ask that question. That's that's on me. And the event was here in San Francisco, so I couldn't send you, Steimer. I wouldn't have wanted to go, probably, but that's fine. <laughs> You're like, I don't want to watch have people watch me I mean, get my I'm ass kicked either. I'm interested either. to see it. I, I definitely would go. I would go to a preview event of this just to, like, get a, get a taste. Yeah. See what it's all about. But So, um... Hidetaka Miyazaki told GameSpot, we think the level of enjoyment is really going to vary and be very broad from player to player. If you are that player who likes to take their time and carefully piece things together and learn the enemy's weakness and positioning and observe everything, you're going to have a great time. It's the sense of discovery as you explore the three-dimensional maps. You're going to have to find something, maybe a new prosthetic tool that makes you think, hey, why don't I use this against that enemy? And when that clicks, when it works, that's going to be the sense of satisfaction for that player. Whereas the other player who just likes to rush in there and go katana on katana and feel the blade to blade blow by blow gameplay they're going to feel that intensity they're going to get that really high level challenge that's probably even more challenging than previous from games so we feel everyone's going to be able to have something to suit them here's a game spot article dated june 19th 2018 it is just one difficulty level okay cool so i'm I still gonna try it no baby ass baby mode for us <laughs> Hashtag get good. Yeah, I yeah. know, right? Uh, but the game looks good, um, and I believe it's coming out next year. And one other thing I want to talk about, I know the, uh, this section I've been talking for a long time. Thanks for bearing with me, ladies. Um, I love your is, voice. Is Spyro reignited? So, is that the same thing I played at E3? Um, I think I got to play a couple different levels that you didn't get to play. So, But, but it's like the same because it's Spyro. I mean, yeah, but I didn't get to play it at E3. No, I know. I'm sorry, Simer. Would you like to do this segment? No, 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 that's not what I was saying. I'm just being salty. That's all. <laughs> it's fine. 
Talk, tell me, how did you feel being <laughs> that purple dragon? Well, <laughs> I'm going to lay something on you. I never played Spyro. This I only event... played Spyro in like demos and shit. I never yeah, like, I only, sat down and played that game. I only ever played the demo discs from the PlayStation mm -hmm. magazines. Yeah, yeah, I so I was intrigued to play. It's it's like super cute. It's really the 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 remake is really well done. Uh, remaster remake no remake I think. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, so remake. I got to play uh Stonehill, Idle Springs, and Sunny Villa were the three different uh, levels that I got to play. So I, t I checked out a little bit of all of them. And I mean, it's just smooth and crisp and the game looks great. And you got that Spyro kind of cheekiness and it just really looks good. Toys for Bob did a great job. It's hard for me to really go too much more into it because as Stiver said, it's, it's Spyro. And if you never played it like me and you want to check it out, the controls are super easy to pick up. It's, you know, over the shoulder, third person adventure game where you play a purple dragon and you can run headbutt stuff to break it open and you can burn things down with your fire breath. It's, yeah. uh, <laughs> what, what, what more could you simple. ask for? So and and still did you ever run into the thing where like, so this was one of the things that sort of annoyed me. Um, there was a part where I had to like run down a hill and glide, <laughs> but I basically like would bounce off the edge of the platform and then die. And that happened like three times in a row until I finally had enough clearance where I made it onto the platform itself. I did not have that same issue. I was able to make it onto the platform without any problems. I just couldn't, I couldn't fly. I don't know what was wrong with me. <laughs> I believe I can fly. I wasn't even drunk. I Sober. Believe. Sober me couldn't make it. Touch the scar. I was hoping right. we were going to keep going, Britt. I'll think about it every night and day. Okay, you know how earlier you told me to stop doing a thing? Because it was really annoying. I'm going to tell you to stop doing the thing because it's annoying. Stop it. Why would you be so mean? <laughs> Do you want me to break out that cracked out Mickey Mouse voice again? I think hey, the show's going off the rails at this point. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that means it's getting late. Um, I think probably on that note, um, unless Stiber, you want to talk about the games you've continued to play. I'm I'm not going to talk about them. I'll t I want to talk about my strategy. Okay. It's not a strategy. Let's talk. Just about like it. so, I'm currently I'm I picked Octopath back up because I put it down for a while, um, but I'm also still playing Nino Kuni 2. Uh, Nino Kuni 2 is what I call my weekend game, and it's I only play it on the weekends. Um, because I want to sit with that game for a while and I would be super annoyed if I had only like a couple of hours and then had to stop playing it. Whereas Octopath is a game that I can, oh my God, you guys, I can pick up and put down whatever what? I want. And okay, so what's happening here for those of you who don't know, which is all of you, because none of you could see our screens, is in the show notes, <laughs> Brittany put some emoji boobs. I wrote boobs. Then a butt appeared. Someone wrote butts, and now more things of this nature are happening. So <laughs> I think what the lesson here is is that they're really excited to hear about how I'm playing Octopath and how I'm playing Nino <laughs> Kuni. And even though I sat and patiently listened to them for 40 minutes right now, it wasn't 40 minutes. I'm sorry, anyways. Steimer. I'm sorry. <laughs> Brittany started it. Did, she did. Sorry. She did. Don't blame her. It's fine. Um, but so Octopath, I play every morning. Uh, I sit with my cup of coffee and I play for like an hour because that's it. But this, the thing that is happening to me now as I have gotten older <laughs> is I realized I used to play video games at night when I would come home and now I can't. Like If I play anything or watch TV at night, I can't sleep. Really? It, it actually is... is Impacting my sleep more than I thought it would, which is sort of frightening. Um, because I was just really, we'd have a, I've had a couple of tiring weeks, so I just have been going straight to bed at like 9:30, um, and I was sleeping really well, and I assumed part of that was just because I was tired. But then one night I sat and watched a movie on Netflix because my sister told me to, and then I was up till 4:30. I just couldn't sleep. Hmm. It was crazy. I was like, what's going on here? Hmm. Like, I don't. I don't know. So, so it's, it's a, watching something on a screen or doing something on a screen. I, I assume it's screen related. The blue, um, the blue or light. It could have just been a weird fluke that day that now I am pinning on screen. So I don't know. But for right now, I'm keeping it to no screens when I get home from work except for my phone for like a if something comes through. Uh, and instead, I'm like reading or 
just listening to podcasts and stuff. Mm. Wow, that's impressive. But it means that I have like no time for games, and it's really upsetting. It's it's weird because to me, playing games at night actually kind of puts me to sleep. I don't know. Oh no, I stay up. Really, I don't know. Yeah, like thinking back to when I used to watch my grandma play games when she would watch me during the summer. I remember she'd be playing something and she would fall asleep with a controller in her hand and nod off and like in the middle of a turn-based RPG battle or something. And now I'm playing games and I find myself doing the same thing. And it's like, well, I'm of that age now where it actually puts me to sleep more than keeps me awake. Mm. I could go yeah, both yeah. ways. Uh, sometimes I, I've only actively fallen asleep during one video game. And in what that video it? game, I played it on three separate nights, and I fell asleep all three nights. Oh, no. It was L.A. Noir. <laughs> <laughs> the only game I've ever fallen asleep actively while I was, like, l holding the controller, so bored, I fell asleep. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I don't know. It just, could, it just did not hold my attention. Yeah, that was a game that I was super <laughs> excited for, and then when it came out, I just, yeah, say, I didn't fall asleep while playing it, but I definitely was like, okay, I don't need to play this. And I, part of it, which is the most irrational thing, it really bothered me that you would chase people up drain pipes while wearing dress shoes. Yeah. Dress shoes are very slippery. They would not grip anything. You'd slide <laughs> right off that pole, baby. That's true. That's very true. Um, I, Took I thought... me right out of the experience. <laughs> I love you, Samir. Yeah. I'll, I'll join in the fun. <laughs> well, I hope that you can find a remedy. Maybe melatonin? Maybe chamomile tea? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get it sorted, especially for fall, because I know I'm going to, I like, it's not sustainable. I won't be able to play any of these games for like an, if I'm just playing an hour a day, I'll not finish anything ever again in my life. Um, so I've got to, I've got to figure that out for sure. Mm -hmm. I can sing you a night song every night, a lullaby. If you came and touched me in every night, I'm sure that would help. Okay. 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 Wait, what is there? Is there room? Is there room for Do you for want this? to come? Yeah. That sounds okay. lovely. Tuck you both in, yeah. sing you a song in my Muppet voice. What if we all just FaceTimed right before bed and we all like sing each other lullabies? I believe you can sleep. <laughs> but not if I you're doing the Muppet you voice. you will sleep more than a wink. Does, oh, God. Does Brittany know how to do something besides the Muppet voice while singing? I don't think so. You should karaoke with the Muppet voice. We've talked Dude, about this. My heart will go on by Celine Dion. It's, it's blah. It'll be great. Remember, oh I laughed, though, because I didn't think that you'd be able to maintain for the, for the whole song. It is a long song. Yeah, I've done it before. Are you practicing? Yeah. Are you getting prepared for PAX karaoke? Yeah, yeah. Sweet. It's going to be great. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that brings <laughs> us to the end of our show. <laughs> uh, next week, we have a special guest. Khalif Adams returns to the show from Spawn on Me. We're really excited to have him back. And, of course, as we mentioned, we're doing lots of cool things in Seattle next week. Um, uh, Britt and I will work on a, a post. We'll whip up something at whatsgoodgames.com. So if you guys were like, hey, I'm in my car and I didn't write down the bazillion things you guys were talking about, uh, we'll put it all in print for you so you can uh, check it out later. Um, as always, stay connected with us. Uh, Twitter.com slash what's good underscore games. Facebook.com slash what's good games. Discord.gg slash what's good games. Um, we hope to hear from you. And um, thanks, everybody. And have a great weekend. Goodbye. Great. Great. Oh, Happy wait. Our Q&A next Wednesday. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. At my house. It'll yes. Great. We're going to do it at Britt's house. And I am going to make sure that Reb makes at least one appearance. <laughs> oh, big pupper. It's going to be pupper. great. And we'll have more details on the happy hour Q&A at patreon.com slash what's good games if you guys want to check that out. Okay, for reals now. Goodbye.